And what type of root do we have here? If we have a square root, here's our goal, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to be looking for perfect nth numbers. So if I have a square root, I'm going to be looking for perfect square numbers. Here's how you think of this, and you've done this before. It's just that this is, should be a little bit of review here. You just haven't dealt with the variable portion, which I'm going to add on in just a bit. If you have a square root of 18, we need to look for a perfect square number, which you guys just listed out for me when we were just talking about this 30 seconds ago, that divides 18. So for instance, can you think of a number that you can take the square root of that divides 18? 92. Nine works. You can take the square root of nine, right? Do I want six and three? Yeah. Why wouldn't six and three work? Because a lot of people go, oh yeah, just find two numbers and multiply. Can you take the square root of six? No. Can you take the square root of three? then why would you use those numbers? What we're doing is using numbers that you can take, at least one of them, you can take the square root of. Probably only one of them you can take the square root of, otherwise you can just take the square root of the number at the beginning. Because we're gonna be using this, one of these things, and we need to be able to take the square root or, or the, that type of root of one of those numbers. So if we're dealing with a square root, we're looking for a number that you can take the perfect square of, that's a perfect square number, that divides 18, because we're gonna split that up. So instead of 18, you told me 9 times 2. So I'm going to write this. I'm going to write the number I can take the square root of first. 9 times 2. You agree that's 18, right? Yeah. Okay. You see, now that we have this, a product, we can use the product rule, which says if you have a product of a number inside of a radical, I can split that up as two different radicals being multiplied together. So instead of square root of 9 times 2, this says... I can do the square root of 9 times the square root of 2. Do you see that that's legal? <coughs> math legal. Yeah, don't get thrown in math jail for doing that. That's fine. Can you take the square root of 2? Can you do that? Square root of 2 is 1.41 something forever. I don't know what, exactly what it is. Can you take the square root of 9? Yes. Well, that's great because this at least lets us simplify part of our radical. So, if you can take the square, what's the square root of 9? 3. This is 3. This was, we can't change that at all. That stays there. So here, here's the idea. If you have the square root of 18 over here, which is some number, we're going to break that number up into a perfect square times something else. We split that up as two different roots. And then hopefully, if you've done this right, you'll be able to take the root of one of them. If we can take the square root of 9, that's 3. This is a multiplication, that's a multiplication. The square root of 2, I couldn't do anything with that, so it just stays there. So instead of the square root of 18, I have 3 root 2. Is this a little bit easier to deal with? Yeah, in a math problem it will be. It's a small, well, it's a smaller number inside of a radical, that's kind of nice. Uh, plus, in order to add and subtract radicals, which we're going to do in the next section, you have to have them in the simplest form, that's in the simplest form. I think we'll feel okay with this so far. Okay, we're going to try some more examples here before we add some, uh, some uh, variables in there. <clears throat> okay, I want you to think on it. Don't say it out loud right now. Think on it. First thing you got to do is think of the type of root we have. What type of root do we have? Square root. So you're looking for a perfect square number that divides 98. Don't say it out loud. I want people thinking on this, okay? Think on a number that divides 98. Now, you only have a few numbers to choose from, right? I hope you realize that. You're, you only have the numbers that you can actually take a square root of to choose from. Those numbers are 1, so I can help you. 4, 9, 16, 25, 36, 49, 64, 81, 96, or sorry, 100, uh, 144, 121, and so on. So can you think of any of those numbers that divide 98? 49. 49 works. Yeah, 49 times what? 2. By the way, they're not all times 2. That's just a coincidence. <laughs> okay. So this would be the square root of, yeah, sure, 49 times 2. Why did we choose 49? Tell me why we choose 2. Why did we choose 49? We have square root of 49. Yeah, you can. You can take the square root of 49. That's why we're choosing it. When we do this, this lets us split it up. 
Square root of 49, of course that's 7. Square root of 2, I can't do anything with that, so we get 7 root 2. It's pronounced 7 root 2, uh, or 7 square root of 2. If we had a third power, it would be 7 cube 2, or cube root of 2, or fourth root of 2. So we just say the number and then the root. It's implied that those things are multiplied right there. You ready to move on? Let's talk about the square root of 32. Now clearly we have a square root. We've got a square root. We're thinking of a number that goes into 32 that you can take a square root of that's a perfect square. What do you think? 16. I heard 16, that's great. What about 4? Four? 4 works, right? However, if you chose 4, I want you to notice something. If you did 4, you would get 2 root 8. Are you seeing that? You can do that quickly in your head. You get 2 root 8. Does a perfect square divide 8? Yeah. 4 divides it again. You'd have to do the process over. All right. So unless you take the biggest perfect square that divides a number, you have to do it again. Four, uh, I'm sorry, 2 root 8 is not, is not good enough for this. You can't do this and get 2 root 8. Because this you can break up as 2 times 4 times 2. That's 2 times root 2 times root 2. I'm sorry, 2 times root 4 times root 2. That's 2 times 2 root 2. You should be getting 4 root 2. That's the final answer that you should have. And the way we can see that is take the biggest perfect square that divides that. In this case, it's 16. Square root of 16 times 2. Square root of 16 times square root of 2. You're going to get... Four root, I promise they're not all twos. I promise. <laughs> they don't all end in root two. A lot of times, but not always. That's what we should get. This is a lot quicker, a lot more concise. So instead of just immediately going with your first instinct, maybe it was four on this case, think bigger. See if you can find the biggest perfect square. Are you seeing the, the point there? Yes, no? Okay, get the biggest perfect square. Here, if we just chose, chose four, it'd be four times eight. Square root of four is two, two root eight. Then you have to do the root 8 all over again. That'd be two problems, and we don't want to make that. Not more work, less work. Square root of 14. Square root of 14. Okay, so we'd write this as 7 times 2. Sure. What's the square root of 7? What's square root of 2? Well, there, there is one. It's a decimal. It's not a whole number. Is this going to help you break it up? Okay, so sometimes you're going to get those numbers that you can't simplify. In this case, you can't simplify the square root of 14 anywhere, but this is why I, I showed this example to show you the difference between these. It's not just that you're looking for factors, ladies and gentlemen, because I have a lot of people who they really don't get this process. They think they do because they can follow it. They go, how do you get those magic numbers? Let me try. And they do 7, 2, right? And they go, oh, square root of 7, square root of 2, you get 7 root 2. A lot of people give me 7 root 2 on that. Can you take the square root of 7? No. Can you take the square root of 2? No. Then it's not simplifiable, all right? That's why we're choosing numbers like 16. That's why we're choosing numbers like 9 and 49, because you can take the square root of those numbers. 7 and 2, this is not happening. So we're looking for specific multiple, I'm sorry, specific factors. Factors that you can take the square root of, or the nth root of. So if you got like the square root of 14, you just say non factor It okay, would just say the square root of 14. Can right. we go 14 times 1? Sure, but the square root of 1 is, just gives you 1 over and over again. So it's actually not breaking that down anymore. Right? I mean, square root of 14, you'd stay square root of 14. Square root of 1 is 1. You'd still get the square root of 14 back again. That's a good good point. But yeah, the, we're looking for numbers besides 1. 1's not going to help us. Ooh. Should we be looking for perfect squares anymore? What do you think? No. For instance, uh, the number 4. Is 4 going to help us in this case? 4 times 10? No. Can you take the cube root of 4? Yes. Cube root of 10? No. So the, the numbers you're looking for change depending on what type of root you have. Here we have a cube root, 
we're not looking for perfect squares anymore. We should be looking for perfect cube numbers. Can you think of a number that you can take a cube root of that goes into 40? Now, the numbers you can take a cube root of, if you want to practice these, it's 1. 1 doesn't help us. The next one would be not 3. The cube root of 3 is not 1. What would it 8. Because 2 times 2 times 2 gives you 8. Does that make sense? What's the next one? 27. Good. 3 times 3 times... 16 would be a perfect square number. 2 times 2 times 2 gives you 8, right? 3 times 3 times 3 gives you... Then clearly that's the next number you can take a cube root of. Someone else give me the next perfect cube. 64. 64, sure. 4 times 4 times 4 gives you 64. Are you seeing how I'm getting those numbers? I'm taking sequential integers and multiplying them by themselves three times. Those are the only numbers you can be able to take a perfect cube, uh, cube root of. So 2 times 2 times 2 is 8. 3 times 3 times 3 is 27. 4 times 4 times 4 is 64. 5 times 5 times 5 is 125. So those numbers, those 1, 2, 3, those four numbers are the only numbers you should be looking at, unless it's like a really big number, that are, that you're supposed to take as factors for a perfect cube. 8, 27, 64, 125. Do any of those four numbers divide this one? 8 no. 8 does. Sure, 8 works. Oh, 8 times, what was it? Well, 8 times 5 gives us 40. So, if we have a cube root of 8 times 5, we can still split that up. Cube root of 8 times a cube root of 5. Just don't lose that 3. Don't lose that cube root. This is a cube root. It will stay a cube root throughout the whole problem. Ladies and gentlemen, what's a cube root of 5? You can't get it unless you want to use a calculator. Okay. On the right-hand side, what's a cube root of 2? Uh, <laughs> two. <laughs> <laughs> cube root of 8 is 2. So while we can simplify this, we get 2. We cannot simplify the cube root of 5. We get well, cube root of 5. Very similar to this idea, only now you're not looking for squares, you're looking for cubes. Not your head if you're okay with this so far. Okay, good. Do one more. Okay, don't say it out loud. I want you to think on this. I want you to think about it. Firstly, I want you to think about what type of numbers you should be looking for. Should we be looking for perfect squares or perfect cubes? What do you think? Perfect cubes. Sure, perfect cubes. So think in your head about a perfect cube that divides 54. Just in your head. Again, the perfect cube numbers are 8, 27, 64. That's it. It's the only three you have to choose from here. By the way, is 9 going to work? No. Should you be putting 9? No. no that's Can you take the cube root of 9? You take the square root, if that was a square, that'd be great, but it's not. So, does 8 go into that number? No. Nope. No? How about 64? Definitely not, it's way too big. Only other one we have to choose from is 27. 27 goes into that two times. We'll write the number we can take the cube root of first. Again, we can split it up just like we did the previous examples. We'll have the cube root of 27 times the cube root of 2. Cube root of 2, we're done with that. We can't simplify it anymore. But the cube root of 27 gives us how much? Everybody. That wasn't everybody. You got lazy today. Come on. Three. Play along. Have fun. Yeah, this gives us 3. Then we have a cube root of 2. That's as simple as we can make it. Cube root of 54 gives us 3. Cube root of 2. 